the other Oh, this is what uh, Chandar was showing. Exactly. Cool. And, and so these, I wanted to get into this. This yeah. is great. So these black cubes, they're uh -huh. actually data pole. endpoints. Ah. Right? So you've got, again, a combination of a 3D model, which mm -hmm. is a mesh. Those cubes are the holders of data. Um, and you can just click on any of them and you can turn as many on as you like. That's how you do your data extraction. Got it. Okay, so it's it's basically trigger and click. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Got it. Yeah, trigger and click. And so, so now you have uh, you know, the ability to see your database while you are flying through the point cloud, um, and you know, which is pretty unique. Cause is it a little bit like... Uh, I mean, although when you see these points, yeah. what does that mean to somebody? Six zero zero seven X or seven oh, four one nine? It's just a coordinate. It's just a coordinate. But what you're interested in is the relations. There is a whole, you know, again, this is unique and uh, proprietary to WGI, yeah, yeah. so you know, you don't want to share that. But it's, it, there's a relational database behind these, and so every object has a connection to another, you know, to pole to another object, another set of objects. I see. Cross arm to insulator to span that sort of connection. I see. Okay, so you're really trying to then make sure, are you trying to make sure that these are placed correctly? Or, yeah, okay. Yeah, because I mean, we have a lot of back end algorithms that take the points that you see, yeah. and they completely model the poles, and we can take that and load it into a full loading environment like a for cloud for spider cloud. I see. I never thought a pole would have this kind of data. What kind of a pole is this? Just an electrical pole? It's an electric and utility pole. Really, and it has that so, many nodes on it. This one's not even that complex. Really, is this yeah. like a residential, tri like a traditional this is residential one? Typical or residential, or one that's like five G telephone. No, this is just typical residential. Really? Okay, yeah. so just like walk down the street here in Denver, somebody's yep. gonna have two, four, five, six. I think this. Like a dozen or more, maybe twenty nodes. Some are simpler, some are more complex. Okay. So yeah. Yeah. Wow. And then who? So then somebody in your team. Could be anywhere in the world, but they all look at this because you've scanned it. And when, yeah. when does yeah. the node get connected sure. to the scan? Is it getting at the time no, of the scan? It's extracted after the scan. So okay. we do an extraction process, mm -hmm. and then that data is then repopulated and overlaid because that data was extracted from the point cloud. We know its position in space. So we can then re re display that point. And it's good for quality control because we can have people go in and make sure that that point that's okay. describing that discrete feature mm -hmm. is actually where it's supposed to be. Are these then, um, is it object recognition? Is it by the shape that it recognizes it? Or what is it recognizing? Well, it's a mix. We're working towards object recognition, but right now it's a semi-automatic process. Okay, Okay. so somebody may go in and visually say, yes, this is what it is. Yes. Okay. And then we have, we have another team that does QC. Oh, very cool. Okay. And they do this for, if this is one block, it has... What, however many, six or more of these. So this is like, this could take days, right? It's a massive amount of work. I mean, this is for precise interrogation. I, mean, I see. We have a lot of algorithms that do uh, automatic checks. Cool. Um, but this is for a technician to get in, jump into a pole, and do in-depth quality control. I, I like. I think I get it now. Yeah, it's really interesting. I think that what's interesting is that over here, for example, there's no pole, but there's nodes. So is that a, is that an example of like, hey, the tracking's off? No, I think it's just like criminal. we have multiple no, LiDAR no, tracks, uh -huh. and sometimes the, the data is extracted from a different track. So um, the one thing that we haven't done yet is, uh, you know, right now it's really based on the tracks that get loaded one at a time. Mm -hmm. so you we haven't looked at a, a spatial oh, yeah. boundary that will load all the tracks that fit within your viewpoint. I see. I think that's a, a bigger... Foveated Fovi rendering of uh, your actual situation. Yeah, yeah. That, that's that's an enhancement down the road. Cool. Well, it, it definitely has like a, because of the colors spectrum on this being a little spookier nighttime looking, it has a different vibe when you're in it. I feel like, have you seen Stranger Things? Have you ever been in the uh, the Upside Down? The trees are more pleasant there. Yeah, the trees yeah. might be a little bit more pleasant there. But it does have like this like alternate universe experience. So like, this is what you're, this is what it looks like to look at the world through through the data lens, right? Like you're, you're you really do. This is it's for sure. Like that's why we say it's like a superpower in XR. Cool, awesome. Thank you.